Good day students, welcome. Today, we are going to discuss the topic 1, which is the Hydrography and Hydrographic Survey. This is for the authors and contributors, and this is for the copyright notice. For the outline of the presentation, we have 6 parts for this topic. The part 1 will be the definition of hydrography, the part 2 for the brief history and of hydrography, part 3 fields of competence associated with in hydrography, the part 4 will be talking about the hydrographic surveying, part 5 is the uh, nautical chart, and for the part 6 is for the hydrographic survey specification. So this will be the intended learning outcomes that after this lecture and exercises, the student must have first is to define hydrography and hydrographic surveying, describe the scope of hydrography and hydro hydrographic surveying, and lastly is to identify and explain the standards of accuracy and specifications for hydrographic survey. So to start, I'm going to show you a series of photos and images from the internet that will give you an idea on what is hydrography. First picture is again from the internet. You know, there is a ship that uh, acquires information or data from the seabed. And another picture, the same. There is also a ship. And also getting an information from the seabed or the under the sea, under the water. Lastly, same, no? there is also a uh, ship or a boat that was acquiring no? information or data from the seabed no? or getting the uh, topography no? to be exact. So these three um, pictures here have the same um, goal, no? which is to get an information or to get a data rather from the um, uh, seabed or the features under the water you know, to be processed and to have an information that will be useful for the end users. So, for the part one, let us talk about what is hydrography. So, hydrography, according to the International Hydrographic Office, is that branch of applied sciences, applied sciences, which deals with the measurement measurement and description of the features of the seas and coastal areas for primary purpose of navigation and all other marine purposes and activities including uh, offshore activities for research protection of the environment and prediction services now so when we say hydrography it's not only uh, talk about the measurements no it's also for the um, exploration to have a uh, description of the features kung unsay naasa ilalom sa tubig. So it's not only for the measurement of the depth, it's not only for the measurement of the uh, precise location of the specific features under the water, but also we're going to describe no unsay naasa ilalom sa tubig. Of course, for the purpose of research, so protection of environment, and protection services. Another definition is it requires basic knowledge of geographical, geographical, geological, and geophysical features of the seabed and coast, as well as the current, tides, and certain physical properties of the seawater. So we all know that um, studying hydrography has different aspects to be considered. We need to know, according to this definition, we need to know the geographical, geographical knowledge, no? where and uh, where the places or the locations can be found, geological aspects for the um, marines and uh, minerals. No? Also for geophysical features under the water and coast. No? For example, the geophysical hazards, no? the wrecks that is uh, present in that area. Also, we are going to consider the currents and tides no? because uh, this will really affect the accuracy of the measurement Okay, because these two are um, uh, directly proportional for the accuracy of the uh, data that will be going to acquire during the hydrographic survey. And in brief, hydrography as defined, it is the key to progress on all maritime activities no? and normally of great the national economic importance. 
uh, when you say all maritime activities, like for example, navigations, the cruise ships, no? and a cruise, ship, cruise ships nga scheduling, no? the path that will be going, uh, that the boat can um, magamito nila no? sa ilahang pag-navigate. No? It's because the study of the underwater will really start in the hydrography. Labi na sa navigation na part. So, hydrography adequately addresses the areas such as the safe and efficient operation of maritime con uh, traffic control and coastal zone management, exploration and exploitation of marine resources. For environmental protection, uh, it's because hydrography deals with the ano, exploration, uh, uh, description of the features located under the water. For maritime defense and the hydrographic service through the systematic data collection carried out on the coastal and at sea, it produces aid and disseminates information in support of the maritime uh, navigation safety and marine environment preservation, the defense and exploration. For the part two, we, uh, we are going to talk about the brief history in hydrography. So to start, for the um, history of uh, uh, hydrography, rather, no, is the Carte Pisani. So this was the oldest navigational chart known today. It was named and it was brought no, in 1829 from the Pisan family by Bibliotheque Nationale in Paris. It was drawn on an animal skin towards the end of the 13th century. So we all know no, na in the previous, no, in the ancient times, um, the significant events, the uh, discovered things was named no, from the person who was discovered the uh, the said things or the significant event. No? Sa unang panahon, kung kisay makadiskobre, sa iya ipangalan. And it was grown in an animal skin towards the end of 13th century. And for generations, the northern seamen had navigated from one headline to another using the written directions and soundings handed down from their four beers, a method of pilotage known as escaping the ship. And also another per, uh, person is the Pierre Garcia of Ruyen. Uh, he was the first to publish the caping information in his router de la mer huh? which he illustrated a simple woodcut coastal views so, ani si Pierre uh, Garce of Ruyen uh, he was the first to publish no, na a chart no, or a uh, map no, that, uh, that he was illustrated no, with a simple woodcut no, ang coastal views of their um, location so this was the uh, uh, picture of the Carte Pisane. So kanina, so animal skin siya gisuwat no, for the purpose of navigation. And this was uh, the digital part. No? Kanang the digital part na nila, uh, the digital format na nila from this um, animal skin. And he was the Carte Pisane. Another one is this Cornelius Antonez. So he is a draftsman of Amsterdam that realized that woodcut, woodcut blocks could be used to print charts on paper. His first being his um, Carty van Oostland of the Baltic of the North Seas. While adapting ramp lines and other Portland features, he used the Ptolemy's project projection which had uh, recently been rediscovered by Constantinople. So, si uh, Cornelius Antonis um, first nga naka-realize nga akatong woodcut blocks ng mga drops can be printed into a paper. And he is using the Ptolemy's projection. And 40 years on, uh, another person in the name of Lokas Jansson Wagner of Inkwizen in Holland printed paper charts from copper plate engravings. And in 1584, Wagner published his great atlas, Spagel der Zivart, or the Mirror of the Sea, that contains 45 charts covering the European coast from Norway and the Strait of Gibraltar. So after the Cornelius Antones, here it comes, see, um, 
Lucas Jansen Wage Nair. Uh, from the um, idea of the Cornelius, uh, the wood blocks, or wood, woodcut blocks uh, chart can be printed in the paper. So, si Lucas Jansen Wage Nair, iyang print uh, through the paper charts and publish this great atlas, uh, Stage Nelder Zivart, or in English, The Mirror of the Sea. So here is the picture, no? according to the Google. So he is the, uh, he is Antonis Cornelius. And here is some of his um, uh, chart, no? which is the, uh, there is the uh, coastline and the sea. Hindi nga nila lang pag-visualize. Another one, no? si Wagener had made a great breakthrough in producing a paper chart designed by Seaman or Seaman. And over 100 years, the J Dutch charts were widely available. And even in the British waters. And eventually, si King Charles decided that the whole Britain's coast and harbors, harbors no? should be surveyed. From the breakthrough of the um, Wagener nga idea, so here it comes, the king of the Britain, uh, the British, na, na nag-decide siya na all the Britain coastlines and harbors should be surveyed. For his massive task, he selected a naval officer which named, or in the person of uh, Greenville Collins. So, he grant siya sa title niya, hydrographer to the king, so British, no? and provided him the yacht Merlin and they started to work the um, sur survey of the Britain's uh, coast and harbors in 1681 and they uh, took uh, 11 years no, to finish the work. In 1693, the resulting charts were published in an atlas entitled The Great Britain's Coasting Pilot which contains the 47 charts and 30 pages of tide tables, the sailing directions, and the coastal views. This was precisely engraved, and the chart included soundings of the landlines for harbor entry and etc. The pilot appealed to the British seamen, a further 20 editions being published during the next 100 years. So, from the idea, no, from the woodcut, then printed into the paper charts. So the Great Britain's coasting pilot was being published no? and this was contains of 47 charts and 30 pages but uh, as we all know that there is always a changes uh, it doesn't mean that the first edition is really perfect so in the next few years and the next hundred years this was um, being uh, amended and updated by the uh, concerned persons and during the 16th century, a school of hydrography was being formed in Dieppe by many sea pilots who sailed to the distant shores. So, in the 16th century, na a nice school of hydrography that was um, teach no, on how to really um, do the uh, hydrographic survey or the uh, surveying of the under the sea. And in 1661, si Jean Baptiste Colbert, he was became the chief minister of uh, Louis XIV, and among his many tasks was that of revitalizing the French Navy. So he was um, Colbert, no, Jesse Colbert. Colbert's cadre of hydro hydrographers were working in New France, and the mass of material coming from the Kubik led to the establishment of the Paris of the Depot General Descartes it plants, now recognized as the first national hydrographic office. So out from the work of Colbert's no, from the French Navy, this was being recognized no, na ang ilahang, um, establishment would become the first national, national hydrographic office. And with the end of the World War I, the British and French hydrographers jointly called for an international conference at which delegates from 22 countries gathered in London in June 1919. Many resolutions were adopted by the conference concerning chart, standardization, and finally the resolution out from the International Hydrographic Office with three directors. Out from their um, hard work, 
from the first National Integra uh, Hydrographic Office, then it was being called for an international conference, no? nag-gather ang uh, hydrographers out from the uh, world no? to have a resolution for the standards of uh, hydrographic surveying. And out from that, uh, there are the, the three uh, directors was being appointed in the International Hydrographic Office. So, so much for the brief history. Let's go now to the fields of competence associated with the hydrography. So, these are the field of competence. Na? First is the marine transport, the coastal zone management, exploration and exploitation of marine resources, environment protection and management, the marine science, the national spatial data infrastructure, the marine boundary delimitation, the maritime defense, tourism, and recreational boating. So, ato ni siyang isa-isa ko nang discuss. First is the maritime transport. So, maritime is being commerce, no? Being the uh, basic element for the nation's economy. It's because um, we all know that the maritime, especially the maritime transportation, is being uh, used several uh, years ago. No? Labi na sa pag-transport, pag uh, transport from the, our goods to other country and the other country transfer their goods into the Philippines. And many areas and ports in the world do not have accurate nor uh, adequate nautical chart coverage. Modern nautical charts are required for safe navigation through a country's waters and along coast and, and to enter its ports. So, so unang panahon, there are really no um, accurate no? Nautical chart. By the way, nautical chart is the main output for the hydrographic surveys and hydrography. So this was required no, for the modern uh, modern times. Required as nautical charts. No, it's because it's very important, especially in navigation. And a lack of adequate nautical charts prevents the development of maritime trade in the waters and ports and the concerned nations. So kung wala nautical chart, so maybe dili ma develop ang ato ang maritime industry and a solution to these problems no wala kay nautical chart would not be possible without the quality maps and charts that was produced continually updated and distributed by hydrographic services mo na dili na musulod na dayon si hydrographic survey and si hydrographic surveying because as we all know problema kaayo kung wala kay nautical chart no sa marine marine ports and harbors so, to have that adequate and reliable nautical chart is uh, we need to have a hydrographic survey services. Next is the coastal zone management. The adequate coastal zone management includes items such as the construction of new ports and maintenance and development of existing ones, the dredging operations and maintenance of chart depths and for the establishment. Monitoring and improvement of channels, control of coastal erosions, land reclamation from the sea, establishment and monitoring and dumping of the grounds for industrial waste, extraction of mineral deposits, aquacultural activities, transportation, and public works projects, including construction of the near shore infrastructure. So, as a man musuludri si hydrography and hydrography, hydrographic surveying. As stated here, no, construction of new ports and maintenance. No. Before they are going to construct the ports, we need to have a hydrographic survey. Naman. It's because we need to determine the depth of the uh, sea kung asa malocate si or kung asa i construct si port. And also, we need to determine if we really need to have a dredging one, no? dredging operations. If um kinahanglan ba siya nato siya kalutan or i-dredge ang katong mga siltation nga naa sa present location to have the um, adequate no uh, necessary data nga needed for the civil civil works no? and also for the maintenance no for example na na existing uh, ports na existing uh, ports sa sa ka location so hydro hydrographic surveying is for the maintenance or monitoring no? it's since na may mga ships no and boats nga mo mo uh, 
anha or modunggo no sa sa kaport. So we need to determine if ang um, ang um, features sa ilalom kung naabay mga hazardous nga features nga pwede maka pa unsafe no sa isa ka barko or isa ka uh, boat. No? So kinahanglan to siya kung if ever naabay mga geohazard sa ilalom no? or if we really need to have a dredging operations no? and so on and so forth. So that's one of the example of how the hydrographic survey and, hydro and hydrography is being utilized no, in the coastal, coastal zone management. So here are the pictures that shows how to manage the coastal areas and how hydrography helps no, in coastal management. For example, we need to determine the um, elevation of the riverbed of this part or the coastal um, areas. No? Like for example, we need to determine the uh, level of sediments that is present in the area. So, out from that, if we uh, get the data of the sediments, whether it is increasing or decreasing, so the um, uh, local local government, uh, example, no, will now decide if we need to have a dredging project. In the exploration and exploitation of the marine resources, no, the coastal and offshore sedimentary areas may contain the mineral deposits. No. In particular, like is like hydrocarbons, which require adequate surveys in order to be identified. If the existence of the hydrocarbon is confirmed, this will lead to a coastal nation's undertaking development of hydrocarbon production, which implies interpretation of the seafloor um, morphology. So in this part, ang role ni hydrograph, uh, hydrographic survey and hydrography is for seafloor morphology. So when we say morphology, we need to determine no, or we need to describe what is the present condition under the sea or in the sea floor no? like for example if the area is rich in corals no, or onsay uh, necessary na minerals or marine resources na nasa ilalom corals pwede ba siya sand lang siya tanan na iba to bato and many more no? out from that no, we can um um suggest to the local um, agencies no, if these areas are really good for uh, marine exploitation and explorations. And in bathymetric, no, tidal and meteor meteorological data provided by the hydrographic surveys no, is the fundamental element in the different uh, development of the hydrocarbon industry. So in bathymetric, we need to determine the uh, seabed topography and also the depth of the um, area no, or in, the, in the location. So like for example this one. No? So there is an equipment which um, uh, employed to have or to survey no? the seafloor um, the seafloor of the area. No? Kung naabay possible na geohazards no? and this is for the marine exploitation like sea oils or the hydrocarbon industry. So fishermen need marine information not for the safe of navigation of their vessels but also for the safe deployment of their fishing gear which will prevent costly uh, losses. So we all know na uh, sa navigation or sa marine uh, industry so manginahanglan sila like information from us if um, especially the, to the, the to topography of the uh, sea floor okay gusto nila na mahibawan na para kung asa sila pwede mo navigate if safe ba na siya i-navigate there ang area okay all from that if we if we produce a chart no, that gives an information of the elevation in the bottom of the sea um, the marine industry now will uh, plan no kung asa sila dapat mo deploy sa ilahang fishing gears the uh, boats the ships and so on okay if ever, magpataka lang sila o um, navigate no? or agi sa kanang ilahang mga barko. So, basin, na yung mahitabo na uh, um, dito siya mapadulong sa katong uh, mabawang area. No? So, madaot or na yung malus. No? And dako kayo na siya nga gasto if ever mahitabo na siya. And masayang ang atong resources. And in, and, and in addition, oceanographic charts compiled and produced by hydrographic offices 
are now being extensively used by the fishing industry. Sabi na sa kanang mga um, mga fishing vehicles, no? sa mga mega, no? kanang sa mga sardines industry. Um, fishery activities need detailed charts. No? Anong pinahanglan Manila? Ang uh, marine information. First is to avoid loss of fishing gear and fishing vessels on undetected or poorly charted obstructions. So, muna kung giyan ka ganina, no? They need the information for them to detect, no? Or to have, to plan the navigation of their vehicles. So, next is identify fishing areas. If, uh, this is output of the main information like in hydrography. If, mahibawan man niya, no? Kay, we need to describe what is really under the sea. So, we, we can identify where are the areas are good for fishing. And locate areas where fishing is limited or prohibited. No? Ito man i-classify. Then, hydrographic surveying is essential to obtain timely and up-to-date information and should be periodically repeated. So, same lang gihapon sa topographical or terrestrial surveys. No? Si hydrographic surveying needs also to uh, update, no? from time to time okay we all know that um, everything is changing no walay constant no adjo na may tabo na dynamics na may tabo nga um, changes so we need to um, forecast those changes on what is really happening no nga di na to makita sa atong mata kay of course naman siya sa ilalim sa tubig that is one for uh, marine exploitation and um, marine explorations. Next is the environment protection and management. So, masabitan naman nino. So, pollution caused by wrecks kanang, or when you say wrecks, kanang mga um, mga hazards no? or mga, like for example, mga barko nga nilubog na. No? So, isa na siya ka-hazard no? sa uh, navigation. Also, the oil spills are major factor no? and the economic consequences of this devastating than is commonly imagined. Pollution is very rampant na sa to ang environment. The value of navigation services for the protection of the marine in, uh, environment has been internationally recognized and it should be noted on the chapter 17 of Agenda 21 of the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development or UNSED that was held on um, 1992 Recognize that hydrographic charting is vitally, uh, vitally important in navigational safety. So, it was um, stated na no, on the Agenda 21 on the United Nations Conference and of for Environmental and Development. Uh, si hydrographic charting or hydrographic surveying is vital no, or important for navigation safety. So, murag, gihimo na nilang standards nga before we are going to um, explore if before we're going to navigate this or sail the ships we need to have the hydrographic surveys no? that's for environmental protection for example the determination of wrecks no or anang mga possible na makapasangyad sa barko no? mga dagko nga bato so that's considered as wrecks so it is really need in, it is really important to have a hydrographic surveying before the um, explorations and so on and so forth. So next is the marine science. Marine science depends largely on bathymetric information or for example the depth, the tides, the currents, like, um, tidal, mga tidal informations, global tide and circulation models, the local and regional models for the wide variety of scientific studies the marine geology, the geophysics, and development or placement of scientific instrument, instrumentation, and many other aspects of marine um, science depend on bathymetry provided by hydrographic services. So mainly, ang kinahalan ng marine science is on the bathymetric informations. Again, like for example, the depth of the sea, the um, tidal information, the current, no, the velocity of the current, so dira kasagaran mas musulod si hydrographic surveying sa marine science like for example the dynamic ocean so we all know that si uh, ocean or the seas are not um, 
uh, steady or static. So, dynamic yun siya. Magalihok siya tungkol sa tides and all the gravitational um, forces na maka-affect no? na mulihok ang atong ocean. So, the ocean are dynamic, so we need to determine the uh, quantity the quantity of this dynamic na binaingon. Like for example, the tidal, the current, the depth. No? Okay, we uh, dili man siya static. So, itong mahibawaan kung pilay alaw mo. No? And so on and so on. Next is for the National Spatial Data Infrastructure. No? In the information age, it is realized by the government that the good quality and well-managed spatial data are essential ingredient to economic and commercial development and to the in, uh, environmental protection. When we say spatial data class, no? um, example ano niya is ka ng mga uh, topography, the elevation, the uh, control points. So, yung ana ang uh, when you say is uh, spatial data. So, ang gingundri ah, no? It's essential ingredient to economic and commercial development. Why? Because out from this data, many um, aspects no, will will be going, will be going to use. No, for example, elevation. How an agency you gamit of elevation data? Like for example, Department of Agriculture in the Philippines, Department of Environmental and Natural Resources, the research industry, no, for further research. So, ano po musulod si bathymetry? So. For this reason, many nations are establishing no? national is, um, spatial data infrastructure, bringing together the services and data sets of major national data providers, which is nisudud na si bathymetry or ang kanang um, depth, no? tidal currents, no? mga, mga mga data, apil na dira ang topography, geodesy, geophysics, and meteorology. So, many countries have developed their um, spatial data infrastructure, which is sa isa ka venue or sa isa ka site, kompleto na tanan, naanay topography, naanay geodesy, geophysics, na mga data, and also na apil na si bathymetry. Naanay mga portals karon na available online, which uh, which um, makita ni mo ang uh, bathymetry data. Daghan siya. So, out from that, no, magamit na sa end users to have a further research or further development for the progress of economic. And the hydrographic service is an important part on the national data, uh, national spatial data infrastructure. Like this one, dili lang di ay ang dapat no na naanay ka ng special data lang ang dapat topography lang or sa terrestrial lang aspect but we need also to have a um, bathymetry the bathymetry nga um, information next is for marine boundary delimitation the good hydrographic data is essential for delimitation of the maritime boundaries as detailed in the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea or na nagitawag na itong yung clause so so the bathymetry, no, since a bathymetric survey, since we are dealing with the um, measurement, no, or survey, na naasa tubig, no, in short, ni say bathymetric survey. So, it is essential, no, to to, de uh, to determine, no, kaya kita ang equip or ang bathymetry industry or hydrographic industry are equipped, no, to measure the boundaries of the sea, no, kanang itaw na toog, um na nabas na kadungog na mo ng Philippine um, area of responsibility no ang ingan sa par no, ang ang delimitation or ang boundary between two countries is really important no or really need to um, delineate no kay para dili magaway or kanang bisag karon no pinaka um, fresh nga issue which is di kanang uh, Ah, sa dapit ng part sa may uh, dapit dapit sa may Palawan sa Spratly Islands dira nga area so many countries have claimed that they those are their um, um, belong to their boundary no? so mo nang uh, diri mo sulod si uh, hydrographic survey dapat kabalota kung asa dapit ang ato ang boundary no? 
Mabito na yung nasa gitawag ng United Nations Convention of the Law of the Sea or the UNCLOS for us to know aha dapat aha dapat ta uh, pwede ng uh, muangkon sa ato uh, no? but sadly no? sa mga bago nga news or fresh news we can say nga ato jud to but also the other nations or the other countries also claim that that particular area is also their um, property no? so important siya no? this is the maritime zones according to the United Nations for the law of the sea or the UNCLOS we have six categories here no? the territorial sea the coastal waters the terrestrial sea the contiguous zone the exclusive economic zone and the continental shelf so when we say from the terrestrial uh, territorial uh, sea base line or ang kanang um, shoreline kumbaga no nga gi calculate na siya out from the um, tidal information nga na low tide na high tide ko ana siya og mean out from that we can have this um, terrestrial baseline from the terrestrial baseline um, 3 kilometers you know from the baseline is that's what we call coastal waters and from baseline up to 12 kilometers that's our territorial sea and 24 24 kilometers you know, from the baseline is what we call the contiguous zone and 200 um, nautical miles rather yes, kilometers nautical miles is that, that's what we called um, explosive economic zone or EEZ and beyond 200 is that's what we called continental shelf next is for maritime defense navies are major users of nautical chart products that they must be prepared for deployment of many areas in the world and typically most must maintain a large set of charts. So maritime defense, like for example, the Philippine Navy. From the Philippine Navy, kinahanan nila ang nautical chart products na no, gina uh, produced by the hydrographers. Okay, Naman na sila uh, hydrographers sa uh, Philippine Navy. No? And also, they are um, interconnected with the Namriya out from the products nga ilang pwede gamiton. So again, they need they need to uh, those charts no para maka deploy sila sa ilahang um, vessels no in any part of the world. And the marine data and information provided by National Hydrographic Offices support support a variety of products used in naval operations. Like for example, for surface, submarine, anti-submarine, mine hunting, and air sea naval operations need nautical information, products that is very uh, different from one another. So, um, in deploying the submarine, anti-submarine, and other uh, naval operations really need, really need no? the uh, marine information. Hydrographic and oceanographic data necessary for the preparation for such products must be available if the national investment in defense is to be optimized. So I guess um, in the in the Philippine setting, sa kanang mga naval operations like the Philippine Navy, na sila yung mga in-house officers na moy mo in-house hydrographers rather. Also, the Namri have hydrographers, no? but also the, the Philippine Navy is na sila mga in-house hydrographers to really work on with Namri so that they will produce a precise and um, good no, nga, mga nautical charts. Like for this one, no? the, Philippi uh, the naval ve vehicles no? or naval ve vessels. Also in tourism, no? a good charts are particularly important in the development of economic and important industry of industry, uh, tourism, especially involving the cruise ships. The Kanakaroon, sa Labina sa Philippines is an archipelag archipelagic na country, so there are many um, islands or islets. Uh, pwede adtuan. So 
diya mo ko to resign. No? And out from that, they uh, labi na kayo mo tawbok, no? na ay mga cruise ships na for for tourist um tourist na tourism na aspects magpasakay sila ng mga turista or the tourists from different countries to have a uh, to see the beauty no in the beauty of the Philippines so out from that they really need a nautical chart from the hydrography survey and the potential of the cruise ships industry is special is special no especially important in developing the nations or de developing nations yet this importance uh, source of revenue cannot be properly developed if safe navigation is to remote touristic landscapes is prevented or limited by a lack of adequate charts so out from this statement we can really say that the bathymetric information is really important or the nautical charts which is the output of the bathymetric survey is really important in the field of tourism and as we all know that tourism is one of the major growth industries of the 21st century especially in the philippines no kay uh, daghantag mga tourist spots na wala pa na discover og na discover na no, labi na sa katong mga remote areas na tabukunon pa so si bathymetric uh, survey or the uh, bathymetric information is really need in those type of tourism like this one this is not in the philippines but this is one of the example dapat kinahanglan jud si hydrographic survey in kiwa takabalo for example in this area na yung mga possible na geohazards like uh, wrecks no sa ilalo mga bato nga dagko dapat makabalo ang mga drivers or the the navigate navigators no or the uh, officer of these ships na dapat dili na pwede agihan dira nga part kay na ay hazard or na ay possible na makapa um, cause of accident no? sa isa ka cruise ships so next is for the recreational boating so this is merely the same with um tourism no? It is generally not mandatory for leisure craft to carry charts and recreational mariners often do not update their charts. Sabi na sa kanang mga uh, gagmay lang nga mga fishing vehicles, basta kayo maka-comply lang sila nga na as nautical chart. But they really need to have those updated mga chart kay para uh, makabalo sila nga sa current na kay we all know that the sea is dynamic, no? na aging movement na ay changes. So, dapat i-update yun nilang ilang charts. However, the advent of digital chart information is making possible for recreational user to have updated chart information that is readily available along the uh, along with many types of value-added information such as marina locations and etc. So, na may mga bago rin, no? Labi na sa internet, dagka na kaayoy mga portals na available or applications na available online na uh, mag-get ka og information for the um, navigation, oh uh, no, the uh, what do you call this one? Nautical charts. No? Labi na kay digital na takaroon na age or era. This development is likely to result in the recreational leisure sector becoming a significantly larger user of the hydrographic data as greater numbers of people became able to afford boat ownership. So out from this um, recreational leisure and as stated in this um, uh, statement here you know, the can may equip or financially equip to have a um, boats no? or ship out from that they really need to have an information of the um, local na sea so, since it was readily available or commercially available in the internet, so they were able to update their nautical um, charts. Like this one, no? but they uh, afford an account. No? But one of the requirements is really to have a nautical chart. So next is we are going to discuss all about hydrographic surveying. 
So when we say hydrographic surveying, it deals with the configuration of the bottom and adjacent land areas of oceans, lakes, rivers, harbor, and other water forms in the Earth. So, hydrography compared to hydrographic surveying is, kung yung tag hydrography, it's not really focused only on the um, measurement no? or surveying of the um, hydrographic uh, or the water areas in the earth but also for the des description of those um, seafloor features no but in hydrographic surveying it's really dealing with the um, measurement no? and configuration not only on the bottom no? or the bottom of the sea or in the water areas of the earth but also in the land areas that is adjacent no? with oceans, lakes, rivers, harbors. No? So, dili pasabot nyo kung may yung tag hydrography, hydrographic surveying sa tubig lang dyan siya. No? But also, we need to have uh, to configureize or to have uh, determine no? the land areas which is adjacent to those water bodies. So, it is defined merely as a surveying of water area. So, yun na simple Kung may yung tag-hydrographic surveying, it's a surveying of a water area. However, in a modern usage, it may include a wide variety of other objectives such as the measurements of tides, which is mani atong ginadil ka rin tayo. Yung tawag, uh, hydrographic surveying, hindi lang siya survey, no? but also for the determination and measurement of the tides and current no? and other gravitational uh, attractions or other gravitational effect the earth magnetism and also the term determination of the physical and chemical properties of the water so kaning mga aspects or kaning uh, um, field is now interconnected with the hydrographic survey which is gina buhat na ni sa uh, hydrographers the principal objective of of most hydrographic surveys is to obtain basic data no? basic data like depth the um, topography no? and many more no? for the compilation of the nautical charts no? okay ang data ng atong mag gather through hydrographic surveying will be used for the um, generation of nautical charts with emphasis on the features that may affect safe navigations. So, the parts hydrographic surveying in making the hydrographic, oh no, nautical charts. The other objectives includes acquiring of the information that is necessary for related marine navigational products and for coastal zone management, engineering, and designs. So, ito na din, masulod din si um, field of competence, no? kung asa masulod si hydrography. So now let's go to the purpose of hydrographic surveying. So this is to collect with systematic surveys at sea, along the coast and inland, georeference data related to first is the shoreline configuration, including man-made infrastructure and maritime navigations, like for example, all those pictures uh, on uh, shore that is uh, that are of interest to mariners. So, muna kong yun yung ganina na si hydrographic surveying is not only focused on the um, water bodies no? but also for the adjacent land areas like sport, ports, no? shorelines that is really interested uh, or uh, that has an interest no? for the mariners for their navigation. For example, si port. So, we need to have to survey no? the uh, port or also the uh, the boundaries of the the depth of the um, sea no kung aha nabutang atong port so ingan ano dili lang siya focus sa uh, more on uh, land areas but also for the adjacent areas next is to get the depth no in the area of interest including potential hazards no such as kung igagay na tong mga wrecks no to navigation and other marine activities and also for the Sea bottom composition. And lastly, for tides and currents uh, determination. Ay napadi ay si physical properties of the water column. 
let's go to the uses of hydrographic surveying. So to process the information collected in order to create a organized database capable for feeding the production of thematic maps, nautical charts, and other types of documentation for the following most common uses. First is for maritime navigation and traffic management, naval operations, the coastal zone management, marine environment preservation, exploitation of marine resources and laying of submarine cables and pop pipelines so the out from the output of the hydrographic survey so these um, fields no, are being uh, used or the output of the hydrographic surveying was used no, by these uh, different aspects no. and lastly is for maritime boundaries definition or the law of the sea implementation. So, related to the Japan sa itong discuss from the other slides. And last is for scientific studies. Na, mga researches na related to hydrographic surveying or mugamit ang output sa uh, hydrographic surveying na method. For part 5, 5 is, let's talk about nautical chart. It's a quick introduction lang siya. Okay, since natay um, is a good topic whole topic that is all about the nautical chart. So, the nautical chart is the end product no, of the hydrographic survey. Its accuracy and adequacy depends on the quality of the data collected during the surveys. So, uh, since the nautical chart used the data that was uh, gathered through hydrographic surveying, so the accuracy and precision of the nautical charts will really depend on the quality of the of the data that was collected during the surveys. So it is a graphic portrayal of the marine environment showing the nature and form of the coast, the depths of the water, and general character and configuration at the bottom of the sea. Location of the dangers of navigation, rise and fall of tides, potions of man-made aids in navigation, and characteristics of the Earth's magnetism. So makita nito sa nautical chart ang tanan na uh, aspects that is related to uh, maritime industry like for example the uh, sea bottom configuration the possible dangers the geohazards the bottom features you know, the depth the tides the currents and so on this is an example of the nautical chart this is electro electronically um, format no? so makita na to ang kani is ang topography no? More Japan siya oga ng topographic surveying but in the sea. And other related na mga informations are located in the nautical chart. So there is also an electronic chart. No? It's a digital format of a nautical chart. So it is not simply a digital version of the paper chart but it introduces new navigation methodologies with capabilities and limitations that is very di different from paper charts. We all know na we are now in the digital era. So, misabay po si chart, electronic chart. Which is the electronic version of the nautical chart. And the electronic chart has become the legal equivalent of the paper chart as approved by International Maritime Organization. So, ang yan ang kalainan, of course, mas dali ma-update si electronic chart compared sa atong paper chart. So, it diverses the, inform, uh, the purpose that have led to the publication of the various new generation of charts. The bathymetric charts developed from the digital data or created by multi-beam sounding data allow the underwater beliefs to be visualized by means of the varying blue tints of isobacks or ang kanagitawag na ito nga uh, kung sa topography pa is ang contour lines. So, kung sa kuan pod, kung sa uh, nautical charts, we, 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 that's called the isobac. So, next is for the hydrographic survey specification, the last part of this topic. So, for the requirements of hydrography uh, surveys arise as the result of the policy, definitions, decisions, product users' reports or requests, national defense needs, and other demands. So, same we have on sa uh, terrestrial survey, the si hydrographic survey has a um, specifications, no, survey specifications. And the inception of the specific hydrographic survey project follows an evaluation 
of all known requirements and the establishment of priorities. Among the many objectives and subjective factors that influence the establishment of priorities are the national and agency goal, quantitative and qualitative measures of shipping and boating, the adequacy of the existing surveys, and the rate of change in the submarine topography in the area. So, sa so ako pang giingon, no? kung si uh, terrestrial surveys na survey specification, like for example, in the horizontal survey, uh, or the horizontal control surveying, so natin gitawag na order of accuracy, like first order, second order, so natin gitawag na primary controls, secondary controls, based on the standards and specifications. So, same rin gihapon diri as sa hydrographic surveys. Uh, Naala pong tay, uh, survey specification according to the national and agency goal. So, first specification is what we call a special order. So, special order, so hydrographic surveys approach engineering standards and their use is intended to be restricted to a specific critical areas. So, so special order, these are kind of hydrographic surveys that is intended for critical areas with minimum under nil clearance where bottom characteristics are potentially hazardous to vessels no so possible daghag uh, uh, unsafe areas for vessels no so that's why the uh, ang tawag sa iya is a special order so these areas have been explicitly designated by the agency that is responsible for survey quality so dili tanan maka survey ani nga areas no? na order examples of this um Specifications are the harbors, the berthing areas, and associated critical channels. And in this order, all error sources must be minimized as possible. Dili po diri ang ataas taong error. Special order requires the use of closely spaced lines in conjunction with sonar, side sonar, side scan sonar, multi transducer arrays, or high resolution multi beam echo sounder to obtain. 100% bottom search. No. Okay, since naman tayo gitawag nga uh, single beam echo sounders na kung tayo multi beam echo sounders and na kung tayo gitawag na side scan sonar. So, out from those, um, dapat uh, so, makater man ang tanan or ang bottom of the sea. So, na siya 100% bottom search. So, that's why uh, ang gi um, Recommend for this kind of order is the side scan sonar para makita tong river banks and the multi transducer arrays with um, closely spaced lines. No? Ano, dapat magka overlap yud ang iyahang uh, iyahang agi no? for to obtain the 100% bottom search. In special order, it must be ensured that the cubic features greater than 1 meter can be discerned by sounding equipment. And the use of side scan sonar in conjunction with multi beam echo sonar may be necessarily in areas where thin and dangerous obstacles may be encountered. And also to have those 100% bottom search. Next survey specification is the order one. Hydrographic survey are intended for harbors, or, uh, harbor approach channels, recommended tracks, inland navigation channels, and coastal areas with high commercially traffic density where under nil clearance is less critical compared to special order. And the geophysical properties of the seafloor is less hazardous to visas. Like for example, soft silt lang siya or sandy, lo sandy bottom na, uh, nga ma-tolerate lang mismo sa visas. Na, anang mga uh, lapok, pwede naman siya ma-tolerate pero hazardous nga po siya. So, it's not um, uh, the same with uh, special order na mga hazardous to like for example mga bato na jud no? and uh, other wrecks that is available on the area next is order 1 surveys no should be limited to areas that is less than 100 meter water depth no? so dire po dato mahibaw-an nga kung um, ang ato ang survey ah na bilong atong survey specification when there is less than 100 meter water depth so order 1 asya na sulod Although the requirement of seafloor search is less stringent no, than the special order, the full bottom search is required in selected areas where the bottom characteristics and risk obstructions are potentially hazardous to visas. So, compared to um, 
special order which requires 100% bottom bottom search. Si order 1 na lang siya portion no na or selected areas na kinalan ko an siya of bottom characteristics or bottom uh, uh, bottom features no. That is really um wag mo yung tagkatong areas is na potential hazardous to be cells. So dili siya tanan na magather or dili siya uh, dili tanan I mean rather no sa isa ka location na 100% to that amount kita. So for this area search, it must be ensured that the cubic features is greater than 2 meters up to 4 meters water depth or greater than 10% of the depth in areas deeper than 40 meters. And be concerned, uh, discerned rather, by the sounding equipment. Another survey specification is the order 2. Again, hydrographic surveys are intended for the areas with depth less than 200 meters not covered by special order or order 1. So, mas taas-taas ni siya of depth compared sa 1 of 2, uh, 1 and the special order. And where the degeneration description of the bathymetry is sufficient to ensure that there are no obstructions on sea floor that will danger or endanger the type of vessels expected to transit or work in the area. So, in this criteria of variety of maritime uses, which higher order of hydrographic surveys can, cannot be justified. If ever dili siya sulod sa order 1 and also dili pud siya sulod sa special order so dili siya sa order 2. Again, full bottom search may be required in selected areas same with order 1 where bottom characteristics and the risk of obstructions may be poten potentially hazardous to vessels. Ang kalainan lang nila is ang ang kalaw mun sa tubig. Next specification is ang order uh, order three. Again, these hydrographic surveys are intended for all areas that are not covered by special order and orders one and two in depth excess of two hundred meters. Pag taas na sa two hundred meters and also didn't nasa cover sa specification sa order one of order two, then dito nasa masulod sa order three. So, take notes of the survey specification that for special order and order 1, surveys, the agency responsible for the survey quality may define a depth limit beyond which is detailed investigation on the sector uh, is not required for safety and navigation purposes. So, the agency concerned no, ang mag-determine kung, kung sa jud ang survey quality. For so, uh, special order and order one surveys. The side scan sonar should not be used for depth termination. Again, naman tayo tulok ka um, eco sounding uh, method which is katong si multi beam, single beam and si side scan sonar. So, si side scan sonar mga good is naka oblique ang iyahang uh, eco sounder. So, that's not really good for um, depth determination kina ka oblique man siya. But, to define areas requiring more detailed and accurate investigation is magamit siya. No? Like for example, 100% bottom search gid siya. So for the river banks, kanang kilid na sa may, for example, kilid na jud sa river, let's say river. So we need those side scan sonar para uh, makita yun na to kung unsa ang nasa. Ang 100% bottom search jud ang makuha sa atong survey. So here are the summary of the minimum standards for hydrographic surveys. So we have here the order, the uh, which is the special, order 1, 2, and 3. Examples of the typical areas na covered in special, order 1, 2, and 3. So special are the harbors, berthing areas, and associated critical channels with minimum underneath uh, keel clearances. And for order 1 are the harbor, harbor approach channels, recommended tracks and some coastal areas with depths up to 100 meters. So for order 2 are areas that described in special order and order 1 and the areas up to 200 meters water depth. So that's covered by order 2. And for order 3, offshore areas no, are na, uh, not described in special order and orders 1 and 2. So we have also um, horizontal accuracy for um, uh, special order is we have 2 meters 
ang iyahang accuracy. And for order 1 is 5 meters plus 5 meters, per, uh, 5% rather of the depth. Kinaman tayo 95% confidence level for horizontal uh, accuracy. So, ang 5% mo ni siya ang mabutang diri sa uh, different surface specifications. For order 2, we have 20 meters plus 5% of the depth. And for uh, order 3 is 150 meters plus 5% of the depth. For depth accuracy, for reduced depths, which has also 95% confidence level, for special order, we have A, that is equal to 0.25 meters, and B is uh, 0.075. So again, ato rin uh, determine kung saan si A and si B later in the next slide. And for the order 1, we have A to be equal to 0.5 meters, and B is 0.013. Order 2, a is equal to 0 0.10 meters, or rather 1 meter. Rather. 1 meter and B is 0 0.023. And for order 3, same lang sila sa order 2. So for 100% bottom search, no? for special order, dapat compulsory. So uh, dapat 100% bottom search din siya. And for order 1, required in selected areas, no? kung kato lang na potential hazardos to vessels and for order 2 may be required in selected areas maybe so dili siya necessary na kuha and for order 3 that, that is not applicable so system detection capability so for cubic features that uh, ang special order must be uh, greater than 1 meter and for order 1 that is greater than to 2 meters in depths up to 40 meters and 10% of the depth beyond 40 meters. And for um, order 2, same lang sila sa order 1 and for order 3 is not applicable. For maximum line spacing, si special is not applicable. No? Dili siya applicable ang kung sa'yo pinaka-maximum yun na line spacing. Okay, ang pasabot sa line spacing class is kanagintahay. For example, First nga dagan sa ship is kani. No? And pagbalik na pod is kani na nga line. No? So maximum spacing is ang distance nilang duha. So magdepende man na siya if what type of uh, level of accuracy mo gusto i-attain. And for maximum line for order 1 is 3 times average depth, 3 times the average depth or 25 meters. Which ever is greater than sa ilang duha. Average depth ba or ang 25 meters? For order 2, 3 to 4 times the average depth or 200 meters. Whichever, again, is greater. And for order 3, 4 times the average of the depth. So these are the notes no, on the survey specifications that was indicated and discussed in the last uh, previous slides. So for note number 1 katong makita ninyo nga na ay 1 sa taas is na siya note diri nga to calculate the error lim limits for depth accuracy the corresponding values for A and B that is listed in table 1 or the table that was discussed from the previous slides slide have to be introduced this kind of formula. We where A is the constant constant depth error or in other term the sum of all error constant errors and b is for the factor of depth dependent er, de, dependent error and c b is in depth another note is note number 2 for safety of, of navigation purposes the use of accurately specified mechanical sweep to to guarantee a minimum safe clearance depth throughout an area may be classified or considered sufficient for uh, special order and order 1 survey Next is the value of 40 meters has been chosen considering that the ma maximum expected uh, draft draw of visas. And lastly is the line spacing can be expanded if producers procedures rather for ensuring an adequate sounding density are being utilized. So I guess that's end our topic one no? for your questions and clarifications about this topic. You may. Uh, 
message me through, my, through our FB page or also in the LMS chat. God bless everyone. I hope that you are all doing good in the midst of this pandemic. And keep safe and have a good day.